Oh, oh, I, let, me, let, me, let me tell you, I, I hear you on that, and that is difficult. Yeah, you know? so, that's, but, so that's the issue is traffic that kind of Yeah, so let me, let, me, let me explain to you. You kind of thought about that, and I know you can't see it from there, and it gets in the dark, but you can see it. There's, what we've done is not have any houses that are right on Lombard. We're actually set back on the street. There's one curb cut over here. And then there's an internal driveway. So each one of these houses, people would back out in their own driveway on, the, on their own property, come here, and then come out to make the left turn. Okay. You're going to come out with that, for that. There's a house, and then there's like a slope, and then there's a three between walls. So you're saying they're going to come out onto Lombardi? You can yeah, come up and look. It, it's, 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 you know, you're, you're going to have to take it to the Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can't this, is, this is my house here. This is my house here. <laughs> there was a camera. <laughs> and I got it pretty good actually. I got it. I got it. So, it's this. It's made on the bottom. This part here. I think you've driven down Phelps lately or at all. Okay, Phelps is not very, it's not very wide. And, and people will need, they have to give you the right of way to let people go. Uh, right, but see, that's, that, you, you can say that, and that's true, but okay. we already have a situation that is just going to exacerbate. Okay? So we want to mitigate the amount of uh, people living okay. in that so, particular lot. Okay, so I, I, I hear you on the traffic. I mean, traffic, I mean, I drive around the streets LA all the time, and just most places, it's very, very yeah, that was another issue with the previous one. You have to get rid of the taco guy. Yeah, the taco guy. She's got a knife. I know. The previous project. Well, when we built it, I know. Their driveway to the school. He's not in our plan. The driveway to the school was here where this one is. Yeah. And the the, the yeah. certain van was. This is the main thoroughfare. Correct. Yeah. There is, if you go all the way to Soto, or yeah. there is no other one. Right. So. Having one driveway is the problem. Now you're having, right. adding two driveways. Obviously, there's less people, but this is not a safe street here. No, it's a curve. Constant. Right. Let's ask you a real question. Right. Well, let's, but before we go on to that, let's just talk about the safety for a second. Well, again, one thing that we have to is by having a situation where you have three different driveways at different locations makes it better for everything. So, yeah, you, you separate the traffic. traffic. Yeah, you, you separate it. So most likely, you know, if you're using a road and there's, you know, ten other people using it, it's less likely that they have two cars on that road. Forty people. Twenty people. Well, you put forty. Well, you well, put, you know, I'm just saying. The only people are going to come. So right here, this is a proposed road that would come in, and you would go left. And these houses also, we put them kind of, so the fronts of the houses are. You know, it's like it's kind of like the front of the house, and it looks really nice. The garages are on this side, so that people would drive in, and then they would park. There's also guest parking in here. There's guest parking in, in various different locations, and we see the amount of guest parking that's required. But mainly, you come in, would you prefer the and you um, you uh, nope, park back here, or if you if you're going to be here, you would continue to this road and come left, and then there's comes there. So it wouldn't be all 43, it would just be, you know, this group here. Can I add a Just one minute. second, let me finish this one. Then this road comes up to the top, okay. and it handles those. And then this driveway handles those. So it's, it's, it's fun. I hear you. It's possible everybody goes to one road at one moment, yeah. but it's pretty unlikely, because yeah. there's not everybody living in three different entrances. Right. But anyway, so I have traffic as a major concern. And, and I hear you. I mean, Traffic in LA is bad everywhere. So, um, I want to ask a question. A good question. Realistically, how many houses do you really want to get past? Like, I don't think 43 houses fit here. But you have an idea. You want you guys you, to me it's not like you're trying to con us with 43 houses so that we can say, no, we don't want 43 houses. You can only build, say, 25. And in the back of your mind saying that's how we're going to build anyway, that's what we want to do here. So we'll just go to the 25. Oh, yeah. Well, and not, and not only that, when you build new houses, usually uh, young families buy them, and they maybe only have two cars, 
but as, as they have kids, they get older, and then they have, instead of having two cars, they have four cars. And sometimes they have six cars. Yeah. And, and, you know, neighbors. And if, you, if, if you ever notice when you see all these new neighborhoods, everybody buys them, and all young people buy them. And you could park and everything, everything, but when the kids start growing up, you stay there long enough, then you can't park anywhere. Yeah. Okay, let me just ask you a question. Um, first of all, you know, I'm not here to con you, okay? I'm, I'm here. Well, maybe I used the I'm, wrong word if, if that offended you, but we no, you have to do more than that to offend. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it might be because your face is red. <laughs> okay, it's, 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 it's a little warm. But we're, I'm not here to con you. As I said at the beginning, we're here to kind of explore. Okay, we're presenting some ideas. You would have a chance to input. Okay. We're going to take, you know, the, the input. And see if we can address it. See what we can do about it. I mean, there's some stuff we can probably do. Is there, is there's there some stuff not. But is there going to be HOAs on here? No. So let, let me explain that, but let me finish with the challenge question. When we first looked at it, and we looked at the, the zoning and everything, we were looking at doing actually a higher number, about 50 dollars. And that would have required a zone change and a general plan amendment. And they wouldn't fit on here. But as we start talking to the city and understanding the small outer organs and understanding things and talking to the councilman's office, and the councilman's office said, you know, if you guys could scale this back to under 43, you don't have to do a general plan amendment. You know, it's you know, much easier going. So we looked at it, and it is a financial you know, implication to do 10 less homes. But we, we scaled it back from 53 to 40. So it is truly our thought at this point. But again, you know, it's draft. But I am not here to come up with some number and then do something less. That, that, that is absolutely not the case. So I mean, I'm looking at right now and telling you that that's, that's not really what we're doing. Now, if, if it works out that, or it doesn't work out that way and it ends up being a different number, that could happen. But we're not trying to do more and we're not trying to do less. What we're trying to figure out is, can we work this in the side, comply with everything, you know, getting input, trying to do our best to address concerns, and okay. see so if we can do something that's that advanced. Okay, so just one second. There was, you had a question for a while, and you started a question. Let, let me, yes, yeah, 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 sir. Oh. Uh, my name is Ruben Chavez. I don't live in El, in, uh, El Torino at this time. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, I, but I did move shortly after the Army in the early 60s. I lived on Lowell and Poplar. Okay? I lived over 10 years. I now still have relatives that live in El Torino since the 40s, right after the World War II. Okay? <clears throat> then they bought a house on O'Sullivan. I did my... I felt it out eight years and I wanted to be close to the school and not deal with the parking hassles at the school. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm very familiar with that. I've been all over inside that mountain, on foot and in the car. Okay? I'm in the neighborhood council. Uh, I'm a director there along with several people that are here. Okay, my interest and my passion for El Serino has never died, even though I don't live here right now. <clears throat> but I'm so happy that you're here opposed to the other contractor, which unfortunately some people that have been living here for so long and so comfortable here, they have forgotten or they weren't aware the houses where they live, that they're stuck on now, they were no different long before any of these people probably moved there, but no different than that project back then in the outer areas of El Sereno. And those contractors had the same problem you're running into a wall. Okay, and nobody wants changes, they always dream about the traffic, uh, <clears throat> and all kinds of problems they're telling you no. As you know, you corrected that gentleman there. He's so upset because you're putting 40-some houses. I'm not he, upset. Sir, I have a floor. Come on, Chavez. Come, come on, Chavez. Be respectful. Dave, be respectful. You're, you're, you're I can't cry you're while you talk. You're not in, in I can't cry quiet. You don't even live in our Finish up. Finish up, Ruben. Finish up, Ruben. Finish up, Finish up, Ruben. Uh, Ruben, please. Okay, I've had a lot of houses here. I don't care. You don't live here That's no more. We live here. Don't start pointing the finger. I, I, I live here. I've been here for 43 years. I can buy a house years. right now. I graduated okay. from Wilson. And I live in the okay. neighborhood. Right. It goes to you. You don't know that. You go in my neighborhood. It's my neighborhood, too. 
Finish up, Tommy. It's not your neighborhood. What did you leave it? You left the hills because you think I wasn't good enough. That's why you left it. I'm not I'm not bullshit me. I'm an all right, all right, Tommy. Finish up, Tommy. Finish up. Finish up. Finish up. The first amendment gives me that right, and I apologize to you. Focus back on that. Hang on. I got the floor. There is no floor. What do you mean? This one is this. I apologize to you if you took offense. It's not in your council. Enough already. Hang on. Stop interrupting. I didn't interrupt you when you were talking. Well, you're taking 20 minutes. But you took 35. Okay, now, that long. I also apologize to, to everybody oh else that's here God. that don't like what I'm saying. Just okay? say it. I'm sorry about that. <coughs> but reality is reality. There's tons of cars everywhere in any city. In any city. And everybody always objects to progress. We all do. Okay, for one reason or another, many of the objections are very honorable and reasonable. But we live in a progressive world. Okay, I'm so happy that this gentleman, whoever he represents, I don't know him from Adam, and I'm never going to know him, but I'm glad that he's here. We're finally going to get something done in that mountain and get rid of that eyesore in Not El Sereno. That's your opinion. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The trees are green. Oh, yeah, Make it a park if you want to. Okay, yeah. I'm not objecting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Now you said something good. Okay. Right. Wait a minute. <laughs> but that isn't the issue. That isn't the issue. You guys that want in a park, go do what you need to go do to make it go park. It's over here. All kinds of ways. This isn't the place for that. Go to the city and start your petitions and all what you need to do to do that. I'm not opposed to it. Okay? But since right now the issue tonight is that subject, and let's address that. And let's not run this guy out of town. We're if not you talking about Hang on! If you want to run him out of town by putting something We're going to run you out of town. Hang on! 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 But right now, this is the subject at hand, okay? And he has... We're not trying to stop, stop the project. Me. Right now, we have a beautiful thing going on here right now. It's going to have a ton of problems. Just like the bridge that they're taking down. It's got a ton of problems for the community, the traffic, and all that. You know, this is going to have a work with the guy. Yeah, He's experimenting. He's here to see. Time. We only have so much time. Hey, so but you had your chance. Thank test. you, Travis. Thank you. Hi, no, Thank come you. on, stop you it. You know, you know, you know, okay, wait a minute. You all had we're several times. That gentleman, with all due respect to him, was able to speak several uh, times. And I stopped okay. speaking. Okay, I'm not really addressing <laughs> you, sir. You're not going to get a chance. Okay, <laughs> so please bear with this gentleman. Please bear with this gentleman. Give him a chance to tell you and explain and answer all your questions that you want to know. He's a right to know. And he's willing here to tell you. And he's here to listen to the community. And he is. And you live where? Thank you. I'm a Thank stakeholder. You. Where do you live? Thank I'm you. a stakeholder here. And that's what you are. That's what you are. Yes, I am. And I care about my tenants. Okay, okay, folks. Can we get back? Yeah. I have two comments so far. Density and traffic. Density and traffic. I got that. I got that. Good. I think there's a question. Do you have a I have two things that I wanted to ask. Okay. Okay. Are you wanting to share every time for Yes. Did you say? In order for this project for you to make it happen, no rezoning is necessary? Did I understand that? No. Um, we, no, I didn't say that. Okay. What the current <laughs> zoning is is what's called RD6. Okay. So the vast majority of the site is RD6. There's a little piece of it in that southeast corner is R1. Okay. So the RD6 allows for a 6,000 square foot lot minimum. And if you do the math and just take 4.91 acres and divide it, you get... 43 lots. I don't want to be rude. I heard you say that earlier on, but if you can explain it to me in plain English, okay. where, what is it that, what houses are allowed by the zoning that we have right now? And 35. Where, so, but right now, with what you have, you could have 35 homes right. that require no rezoning. Correct. So the then if you wanted to go um, to 43, then it's going to require a rezoning. You, we would rezone from, it's what they call a minor zone change. It's in the low to moderate band. There's a lot of yes. changes. So this is from RD6 to RD5. So then it's just 5,000 versus 6,000. If you divide 
the total number of square footage, which is a little over 200,000 by five, as we get to 43. And that would allow the difference between 35 and 43, so it's eight homes. Can I? Can so, I that, that, so that's that. But you still comply, it's, it's all complying with the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. You're, 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 you're very correct on the numbers. It's a numbers game. Because if you have 100% of the thing and it's and you divide it to 6,000 square foot lots, you have much bigger lots. Right. But he's doing the numbers game is you're squeezing the same amount of square footage into a smaller footprint. That's why the homes are smaller and more close together. The entire property allows you to, but not in this condensed location. It's a numbers game. Well, yeah, rather than it's say like grade. grading. Nobody's mentioned yeah. the grade. How well, much, no, no, how much no, in a grade? I did. I, I did talk about it that we're working with the existing topography to minimize grading. So, so in order to have, this? let's say if you wanted, let's say if it were flat, it would be immensely easier. Yeah, to do a six thousand square that. foot lot is, is a nice size lot. You, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I, you had mentioned that these are yeah. roughly between two to three thousand square foot lots. You're right. My backyard is two to three thousand square foot lot. Imagine yeah. a home, two to three story yeah. home on my backyard. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. So that's how it gets well, that many in you know, a small well, area. In minimizing the grading, how many could we get with that be? It's removal. You know, I don't have, we haven't done that calculation. That would be. Yeah, so we don't. Like yeah, well, it's a little bit. Well, there'll be other meetings. Yeah. There'll be yeah. other meetings. So, maybe uh, yeah. 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 so, so anyway, yeah, one, one thing is that if you were just completely flat, and you graded it out at 6,000 foot lots or 5,000 foot lots or whatever, it would be, you know, that kind of a flat cap, which, you know, is really it's not the plan to do all the kind of grading and stuff, but rather work with the existing topography. So what do I mean even by that, okay? So here, these homes are basically at the existing grade or within, you know, a foot or two that are at, at Eastern. Okay, so that's, that's it. These six homes are essentially at grade, also at the graded number. Okay. These homes are, there, there is a, an elevation change from eastern to here that exists today. And it's going to fluctuate in our um, preliminary grading, the way it was graded. And this road would come up to it, and but, but there is that kind of flat pad that's there right now. Up here, this hilltop has a big flat area on top. Maybe some of you have been up there. It's a really steep road that goes beyond 18%, which is not code. In order to make the, the road work at 18%, we have to lower the grade to a maximum of 15%. So what, what would happen here is some of this dirt would be removed. Actually, first, there's dirt here. There's um, a lot of trash that's been buried over many, many years. I don't know how many, but a lot. And um, there's unstable dirt in there. It's not suitable for building. So th the first thing that would happen is, again, it's very trap. Is that that would be removed. Okay. And then the dirt that's up here would get moved to there. So the height of this hill would drop a little bit. But if you kind of visualize the peak of the hill and you, you know, take a bit of the top off, it ends up being, you know, kind of a broader um, space. And that's how we're able to get homes up here. And there's space between them. And each of them are oriented to views. And an interesting thing is, oh boy, I, I apologize. This was probably not a very good idea. <laughs> the outdoors, I, it's, it's really kind of dark. <laughs> well, that even makes it more difficult. Uh, <laughs> these, th these are like just some sections which kind of show um, how the grade oh, might be, oh, how, 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 how some of the houses look in relation to each other. And again, it's very rough. It's, it's, the one thing I can tell you for sure is it's going to change, but at least it starts to give you know an impression. So um, this, I don't know if anyone can see this dashed line right here. That dashed line represents the current slope of the hill. Now, in order to get, it's just kind of hard to see this one. 
Lombardy is here. The six houses that we're talking about that um, you were saying are like too close together. This is kind of like the slice if you were looking from Eastern, you could somehow slice away the whole and have another look at the side. There's this house. There's a couple of retaining walls, not to scale, but it's basically to depict that it you know falls in line. And then the slope comes up here, and, that, and that's what would be the natural slope. And so this house would be entered from the second floor, and that is from one level down, and this is one level up. So it's kind of like into the hillside in the middle. This side is basically at the top, but if you if you see where that is, if you take this down, you know, basically this much to here, the top height of this three story, kind of just approximating it, not that many feet higher than the existing grade. So it it's not like there's a house on top and it's gonna be a bunch of feet above. So that's kind of just showing that. And there's some other cuts in it. And so what the grading would do is lower the top by moving the soil down to that to that bottom, but still essentially maintain the overall look. So it would still be like back in this picture. Um, like when you drive by, and, and I drove by a number of times, a lot actually. When you're driving north and you look out and you can see you're driving and you look out your right past the window, you just see like this little bit of a brown slope. And it's just kind of like the first few feet of the slope. And so that would still be there. The road which is there would still be there. It's just we're going to flatten the road out so it's not steep and it's not hazardous the way it is now. It's to code at um, 15% at the greatest. And then this top would be here. The perimeter would be surrounded by a two-story with the three-story that's kind of like tucked in behind. So from <laughs> Eastern, if you were here or you're at the park or you're at the school and you're looking up at that slope, it's going to kind of look somewhat the same, except to be cleaned up. You know, we're going to irrigate, plant, and, and do things. Yeah. And, um, that yeah. brings me back okay. to my original. Well, yeah. There's no homeowner association. Oh, yeah, let me explain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so in the Smiley Ordinance, they have a uh, mechanism that's called a maintenance association. So when the maintenance association works like an HOA, okay, and so that would get set up. They would have a third party manager, so like a management company, and they would be responsible for the open space. Okay? So in, the, in that maintenance association, we can have all the rules and the bylaws of all the rules that we want to have what's allowed, what's prohibited. Okay? Like you can't have a business, or you can't have a business. You can't sell taco. Yeah, you can't sell taco. Whatever. I mean, there's going to be a whole thing. Who will own the world and the world? The, um, Maintenance Association, well, it, it, it's an interesting question. It's not, it's not finalized. One way to do this is you extend the lot lines to the entire property. And each lot owns a piece. So like as an example, that's what, just, just pretend oh, this. Is the yeah, like this lot could go, you could just draw lines down to the street. Okay, and then this owner would own that land that's right there. Okay, is there a so possibility of donating it to the city and maybe city to maintain it for recreational use? Well, the whole thing. I don't. I don't think they would do anything with that little strip. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what? And so that's one way to do. It. You take the lot lines all the way. Okay. What the city suggested, the planner, is keep the lot lines tighter to the homes, and then create on all the other open space that's on the site lettered lots that would be. Um, maintained by the uh, maintenance association. So they would be responsible for the maintenance, the irrigation, the few weeding, the trash, the road, so all, all that kind of stuff. Paid, paid by the homeowners, yeah. We would put in money up front to start it, and then the homeowners, when they come in, they would pay in. Now, unlike an HOA, a lot of times, you know, it's pretty big dollars, I think what I've seen, you know, two to $400 frequently. A lot of them are these excessive management fees, and there's just a lot of legal issues with condo ownership. This ends up being, you know, relatively small. I don't know what the number is, but I'm sure it would be below $100 per per home. 
Yeah. yeah. What happens if they don't? Well, and there's, there's um, well, first of all, like I said, we're, we're seeding. People are then, the, the way we've done it in the past is we have the homeowners, you know, pay the first year in advance, like when they close the home. And it might not be that much. Let's just say, for example, it's not this number, so don't write it down to remember it, but just as a math example, let's just say it's 50 bucks a month. So in addition to buying everything else, you have to, they have to come up with another $600, and that goes in. And then we put money in, so there's enough money. Then people pay. And the home the home Association has a way to handle things, but quite frankly, what I've been told by lawyers is it's really not very effective. Because what they do is they put a lien on the house, and the person never sells. Who said they lived here for 40 years? They could never collect because she never sold her house. Okay. So that, that's how that's handled. Well, let's handle differently. It's actually handled, you, you can do it through small claims court, which is much more effective. So if a person decides to be a bad boy and not follow the rules and do something in violation, the maintenance company would communicate with them, fix it or do whatever, and if they did, they could take them to small claims court and... Put a lien on them. Yeah. On and, property. And, and they collect. And, and the small claims judgment, can they, I, I believe, you know, it's, it's, it's more effective, you know. So, so that's really how it's, it's basically done. So you get the benefits of the HOA, and we you know, create all the rules that make sense to govern the community. So, so the streets are privately owned. They're not owned by the city. Correct. Like I have other properties in the city of L.A., and like you just alluded a moment ago, I pay taxes all the way to the middle of the street, but I have no rights starting from the sidewalk property line, from the sidewalk there to right. uh, the middle. I have no rights whatsoever, right. but yet the city maintains it. Yeah. So when you have that kind of setup there, are they private properties? And that's where you're talking about the maintenance company that's going to take care of that? Yes. That can be a problem. <laughs> well. <clears throat> well, why not let the city handle the street like the rest of the community? Well, they don't do a very good job of cleaning. Well, they don't maintain what they have now. No, right. see all they the don't. Potholes? And you don't want private homeowners to be in control of the hillside because they will not be associated. Well, the fire department will definitely write them up. So, sure will. Do you want green? But he has a very interesting way of watering too. Collect the water. Yeah. So, um, so um, let me let me bring up one other thing. I'm sorry, Melissa, you had a question. I did. I wanted to go back to the hillside board. Well, certain, some, some parts of it. The two, there's two areas that right now is a, they wouldn't necessarily apply. So the retaining walls. So they could or could not, depending on how we do it. And the other? The other is the building height. So in the Northeast Ordinance, the building height max is 26 feet. You can't, you can't go over 26 feet, which essentially you know, constrains you to a two-story home. Now, we originally had two-story homes, bought it on the whole thing. But then, as we were talking to architects and engineers and things, people were talking about having a couple of benefits. One, more interesting site. Two, you have a smaller footprint. The homeowners get open you know, yard space when they might not have had it otherwise, or a bigger open yard space. Because you have a smaller footprint, and you maintain the square footage. So in order for us to be able to get approval for any three-story home, we would have to ask for a variance to the Northeast Ordinance. And, and, if you, and so, so if, you, if, if you're in our position, you know, we're looking at both. I mean, you can only build it as two-story. What happens, though, is the... Uh, the yards, I said, and then everything's two-story and it's very uniform. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you about the three-story homes that you have on the top. Yeah. What is the height of those ten homes? So what would the height be for the three-story homes? Oh, all three-story homes. Um, I think about thirty-five feet. So the hilltop would have thirty-five feet on, in addition to from grade thirty-five feet. Um, no, because he's bringing the grade down. Yeah. So yeah. From, from whatever grade you end up with. Yeah, it's just, down, well, you know, we haven't set the height. I, yeah. I'm just trying to think of a really quick to answer your question. If you do a house that has, say, nine foot floor plates, so three times nine is 27, plus another two feet in between is 29, 
And then you probably have a like a parallel yeah, wall that's three feet. feet. So thirty feet. Maybe it's more like thirty two feet would be the three stories. So between thirty two and thirty five feet up the hilltop from grade. Right, from grade. And so but the ordinance would say you can't go over twenty six. You can't do that. Yeah. So and so what we we're, we're just exploring. Like I said, and if we were to say no, we don't want any um, homes to go over the 26 feet, but um, what would your take be? Well, we're, I'm just going to take all the input on everything yeah. and look at it. Because, I'm, I mean, based on this experience with the former developer, I could, I could tell you that if the community decides that we don't want to do, give any exceptions to the site ordinance, the Los Angeles site ordinance, we're going to be in downtown and saying we don't want anything above the 26. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that and, and respect that. And, you know, everyone has a voice and everything's kind of taken into consideration and we don't adjudicate and we're not here to cram anything down anyone's throats. Um, but we did look at it as two-star and we can do it. The, 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 the differences have to do with the yard space, how interesting the architecture all is. Um, the other thing is, is um, the retaining wall on, like, if, if you have, like, an upslope and you're going to build a house like that in the slope, then the rear wall of the house is a dual function wall. It's a retaining wall and a house wall. So you can do it. We would prefer not to do it because it's a lot more expensive to do it, which I know is not a primary concern of yours, and you know you have the hillside, you know, up against it, and even though there's technology and people build basements all over the place, and that's where you have interior walls against, you know, natural exterior. So it's done all over. So it can be done, and you know there's a really interesting argument. Hey, you know, two-story living is this, but there's also a nice argument if you get outside space and you know, people want to maybe have a place for their pet or their children or, you know, to go out and have a barbecue, that kind of thing. So, you know, that's what we're weighing and contemplating. So there's, it's kind of easier to deal with the retaining wall. So what if, like, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven homes here, yeah. but only five homes here. Uh, if you would build these same size five homes here, you'd be under, under the requirement. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah, if we, yeah, what we would do, everyone who's purple would just be this large as what plan. So instead of four, you would have three. You're trying to maximize more homes. No, we can do, we can do all 43 in two